God is love. Oh, come, let us worship. Our processional hymn from the Blue Hymn Book is hymn number 352. Number 352. From all that dwell in all the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. Alleluia, alleluia. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land and every tongue. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high and earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect Epistle and Gospel for the sixth Sunday after Trinity are found beginning on page 226. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, who hast prepared for them that love thee such good things as past man's understanding, pour into our hearts such love toward thee that we, loving thee above all things, may obtain thy promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth the reign of thee and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> the epistle is written in the sixth chapter of the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Romans, beginning at the third verse. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted with him in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness 
of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old Adam was crucified with him, that our sinful self might be destroyed, that we should never again be the slaves of sin. For he who hath died is free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Here ends the epistle. The gradual psalm is Psalm 90, verses 14 to 18, found beginning on page 447. Page 447, Psalm 90, verses 14 to 18. Turn thee again, O Lord, at the last, and be gracious unto thy servants. O satisfy us with thy mercy, and that soon. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Comfort us again according to the time that thou hast afflicted us, and for the years wherein we have suffered adversity. Show thy servants thy work, and their children thy glory. And let the glorious majesty of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper thou the work of our hands upon us, O prosper thou our hand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is written in the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 27th verse. Glory, Glory be, be to thee, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And that him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, Forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful, and to the evil. Be therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under conscious body. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the fall. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> maybe, maybe Jesus is just using a bit of hyperbole, a little exaggeration to make a point. We all do it, don't we? I've done that a million times. Perhaps we've all said something like that. Or if I had a nickel for every time that you said that, I'd be a rich man. No one would ever imagine that we would take those things literally. I mean, how many nickels would you have to have before you'd be considered rich? And who would ever have the time to say the same thing over and over again until we had accumulated all of them? I mean, sure, we all understand that when we say that we've done something a million times, we really just mean that we've done something a lot of times. We don't mean it literally. We just say that to make a point. So maybe Jesus is saying that we have to love our enemies, not because we actually have to love them. Maybe he just wants us to hate them a little bit less than we did before. Maybe he wants us to even try to like them just a little. But to actually love them? Surely he doesn't mean that. After all, loving people that we actually like is hard enough. We all know that. And trying to love people who don't like you back is even more difficult. But trying to love people who actually hate you, people who curse you, who despitefully use you, loving even your bitterest enemy. Well, surely that's not even remotely possible. So maybe Jesus wasn't actually suggesting that we should try. Maybe he was just exaggerating, using a little hyperbole to make his point. After all, we see that kind of hyperbole elsewhere in the Gospels, don't we? Does Jesus really imagine that we'll cut off our hands or gouge out our eyes if they cause us to sin? Does re Jesus really imagine that it's possible to carry a beam of timber in our eyes? Or does he really expect us to hate our father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters if we want to be his disciples? So perhaps we can just sit back and relax. Perhaps we don't really have to try to love our enemies. Surely that would be completely impossible. A nice idea, kind of noble, in fact, something we should think about when we're crying out for vengeance, or when we're ready to post that cruel, judgmental remark on Facebook, or when we strike back in anger, something that might put the brakes on the worst of our righteous indignation, or soften our very worst instincts, but not something that we should actually take literally. Even Jesus wouldn't expect that of us, would he? But what if he does? What about the possibility that that is exactly what he's saying? What about the possibility that he does expect us to pray for those who despitefully use us? That he does expect us to bless those who curse us, to do good to those who hate us, and even to love our bitterest enemies? The fact is, if we're looking for a nice, comfortable religion that doesn't make too many demands on our lives, something that helps to affirm all the things that we like about ourselves, to make us feel better when we're down and promises, promises to reserve luxury sweets in heaven for us when we die, then we probably shouldn't try to follow Jesus. Because Jesus has this infuriating habit of challenging all of our basic assumptions about what's right or wrong, about what's normal or natural. Jesus has this frustrating habit of turning our thinking upside down. And maybe, in a world built on the assumption that we need to take before we're taken, that we should strike before we're struck, that we should have to look out for ourselves first and foremost because we only get one shot at life and the one with the most toys wins. In a world where there's so much of everything and not, never enough for everyone, you, then you need to get your own first before someone else jumps in line in front of you. In a world of endless competition and violence that arises because of that competition, perhaps Jesus is shattering the idols of our assumptions. Jesus knows that the only outcome of this culture of scarcity and fear and revenge and violence is death. And so he speaks of another possibility, one as outlandish now as it was then. 
Return violence with peace, and hatred with love, and anger with patience, and fear with compassion, and greed with generosity, and sin with forgiveness, and injustice with mercy. Jesus is more than just saying that we should stay in abusive or oppressive relationships. Rather, he's showing us how to overturn the order that allows and rewards such abuse and oppression in the first place. Because we're so conditioned to the status quo, to order and stability, and, and the assumption that things must be as they always have been. After all, wasn't Jesus put to death precisely because he threatened the status quo? Because he, some believed it was better to maintain the established order of power and control and violence than to move out into the chaotic, unpredictable world of grace and mercy and forgiveness. But he came back, rising from death. And in the process, he calls us to an entirely new way of living. That's why St. Paul writes in this week's epistle of how we are baptized into Christ's death and resurrection. That the old way of living, the old way of vengeance, of bitterness and retaliation, of striking back, of grabbing and clutching, of closed hands and closed hearts, has to die in us if we are to live in Christ. But let us not be frightened off by what his words don't mean. They don't mean that we should let criminals run free to do violence on others. They don't mean that we should stand by idly when someone is assaulted. They're about loving enemies in a radical way, of loving them into love, not hating them into hate. So who are your enemies? Not the ones you hate, but the ones who hate you or despise you. Often, sad to say, they're the people close to us who've been hurt. A spouse or a former spouse, a parent, a son or daughter, a co-worker. Maybe someone whose evil actions you have exposed, who's now out to get you. So who are your enemies and how do we actually love them? It has to be more than just a matter of thinking nice thoughts. It requires a change of heart, of God putting in us the kind of heart towards our enemies that was in God who sent Jesus to redeem and forgive a world full of despicable people, including you and me. So, how do we do it? Well, we start with acts of love, and we pray that the emotions might follow later. First, we pray. Start by asking God to help them and to heal the hurts in their lives that may be motivators of their actions. Ask God to bless them and show mercy to them. Not to shame them, but to find a way in your heart to love them for Jesus' sake. Then we bless. When you think of a person who is slandering you, instead of complaining about your unjust treatment, go out of your way to speak well of your enemies. Not to shame them, but to find a way in your heart to love them for Jesus' sake. Then we do good. When you see a way to do something good for one of your worst enemies, then do it. Not to shame them, but to find a way in your heart to love them for Jesus' sake. And if we pray for them, and we bless them when we think of it, and do good for them when we have opportunities, the chances are, in the end, that God will put love where no love was before, by grace. Now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost be ascribed all might, majesty, honor, glory, dominion, and power this day and forevermore. Amen. Walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to, to God.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thy own have given. We offer this Holy Eucharist of the praise and glory of Almighty God. And the prayer that we might live the new resurrected life which we have in Jesus Christ. A life of forgiveness and mercy, a life of peace, unity, and joy. Let us pray this day for all those whose hearts are filled with anger and bitterness, resentment. Let us pray for those who this day live in places of violence and abuse. Let us pray that they might know the peace of the presence of Christ. Let us pray this day for all of God's people, praying, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For grace to follow the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that we might share with them in the joy of the kingdom of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For this parish and this diocese, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially David, our bishop, and Paul, our missionary at Bishop McAllister College in Uganda, for Bishop Matthias and the clergy and people of our companion diocese, the Diocese of Hull in Ghana, for Canon Ross Hebb and the people of our sister parish, the parish of St. Peter, and all of our efforts to work together as the body of Christ to bring light to the dark places of this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Anglican communion, for our fellow Christians everywhere, for our sisters and brothers in the Roman Catholic Church and Pope Francis, the Bishop of Rome, and our sisters and brothers in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, and Bishop Michael Price, Bishop of the Eastern Synod, that we might grow into that peace and unity for which our Lord prayed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for all heads of state and government, for those who hold positions of public trust and responsibility, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of all people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For grace to persevere in building lives ordered in justice and unity, that preserved from dishonesty and selfishness, we may overcome injustice and hatred. For the First Nations peoples of Canada, for all those who struggle every day for healing and reconciliation, for those who cope with the effects of systemic racism and abuse. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For a sense of truthfulness and clear thinking, that putting away all violence may share in the efforts to bring lasting peace to the world, especially in Syria, Yemen, Iraq, Afghanistan, Ukraine, and Myanmar. For the members of the Canadian Armed Forces, as they serve at home and away, to bring peace and safety to troubled regions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a new awareness of God's love, that we might bring an end to the evil of racial and ethnic prejudice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are diseased in body and mind, for all the sick, especially Graham, Dorothy, Brian, Lee, Ruth, Lloyd, Lyman, Diane, Cynthia, Eva, Gail, Hazel, Joy, Simone, Maureen, Derwin, Wilma, Griffin, Dale, Tom, May, Eleanor, Kelly, Kevin, Christopher, Cedric, Scott, Sarah, Ben, Michael, Pat, Philip, Terry, Hudson, Aiden, Lisa, Greg, Rael, Marie, Pius, Brenda, Wayne, Alan, Charles, Adam, Eric, Paige, Shane, Rochelle, Sherry, Randy, Melanie, Sheila, Paul, Gerald, Franklin, Suvro, Shelley, Joey, John, Jennifer, Doug, Muriel, Gary, Pearl, Mindy, Mary, Alda, Keith, Elsie, Jean, Judy, Elizabeth, Kermit, Elliot, Tammy, Barbara, Josh, Lorne, Tara, Mary, Esther, Colleen, Kaylee, Mark, Kathleen, Debbie, Carrie, Katie, Vicki, Carolyn, and Tom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, fearful, or sorrowing, for the hungry and homeless, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for all those who suffer from natural disaster, for prisoners, those suffering the enslavement of addiction, and for all those who are in need of God's grace in other ways this day, remembering Chelsea, Aaron, Courtney, Vanda, Martha, Bobby Joe, Georgia, Carol, David, Shauna, Ethel, Sam, Mabel, Marilyn, Donna, Shirley, Kay, Charlie, Maria, Sandra, Sheridan, Ralph, Gerard, Carissa, Deanna, Carrie, Sean, Amanda, Bethany, Brooklyn, Megan, Lynn, Mackenzie, Jennifer, Mark, Kathy, and Ellen. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And let us pray this day for all the faithful departed, especially Lois Clark, Dave McKinney, 
Milton Dorman, Sebastian Edwards, Gerald Gauguin, Leslie Story, Sarah O'Donnell, Ruth Ingram, Margaret Miles, Doreen Smith, Valerie Berry, and Josephine Brown. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom it be in the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdeeds. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy and promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn on him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death from the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed for prayer. And when he had given thanks, he it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given the thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for men 
for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness. Mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy kingdom, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs in thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to us. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so meet the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed with his most precious blood, and that we may ever more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. In the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is here for you, preserved in the body and soul of the last week. Take it in this remembrance that Christ died for you, and do not give in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is shed for you, preserved your body and soul of the everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thanked.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of His mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The recessional hymn from the Blue Hymn Book is hymn number 232. Number 232. Hear, O oh my Lord, I see thee face to face. Here faith can touch and handle things unseen. Here would I grasp with farmer and thy grace. And all my weariness upon thee lean. Here would I feed upon the bread of God. Here drink with thee the royal wine of heaven. Here would I lay aside each earthly load. Here taste afresh the calm of sin forgive. I have no help, but thine nor do I need. Another arm save thine to lean upon. It is enough, my Lord, enough indeed. My strength is in thy might, thy might alone. Mine is the sin, but thine the righteousness. Mine is the guilt, but thine the cleansing blood. Here is my robe, my refuge, and my peace. Thy blood, thy righteousness, O Lord, my God. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us go forth in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of the Lord, alleluia, alleluia.